everyone, I'm Julia Schaefer and welcome to Farewell My Manicure TV. On this week's episode, we're going to make a Christmas decoration out of some fallen timber. We look at a real big problem in our bathroom that's causing a plastic pollution problem and we explore why it is that we feel so much joy when we get down and dirty in the garden. Let's get started, shall we? bathroom today because I want to talk to you about an environmental issue that starts right here, microbeads. Now you may not have heard of microbeads so let me explain for you. When I was growing up and I was a teenager we used to exfoliate our skin with natural exfoliants. For example the products might have contained almond kernels or crushed up oats that would be the abrasive that was in the uh, cosmetic that would help clean your skin and make you feel all glowy and shiny. And we would use those once a week because it was very, very effective. Then some bright spark developed the plastic microbead. Now these little grains of sand type pieces of plastic are an environmental nightmare. Also, you use more often because they're softer on the skin. You can wash your face with them every single day, which means that you run off to the supermarket and buy more product, etc, etc. And you can see where I'm going with that. But the problem is, that they get flushed down the drain. That's part of the issue. They flush down the drain, they bypass a lot of the filtration systems and end up in our waterways. What's wrong with that? I hear you say, they're little tiny pieces of plastic. Well, those little tiny pieces of plastic are a toxic time bomb. They chemically absorb the toxins in their environment. So they're floating around the waterways, down the drains, etc chemically attracting all toxins around them into themselves and scientists have proven that they can be up to one million times more toxic than the water that they're suspended in. So what happens next is the little fishes eat them, ingest them, bigger fishes come along and eat the smaller fishes, bigger fishes again come and eat those big fish and ultimately some fisherman goes out, gets them out of the ocean and puts them on our plate. So here we are with a what we would consider a beautiful meal full of toxic chemicals that have been absorbed by these microbeads. So it's an environmental disaster, it's clogging our waterways, creating lots more plastic pollution, harming the fish and ultimately harming us. So what I need you to do is look in your uh, bathroom, in your cleaning chemical cupboard and make sure that you don't have any products that have microbeads in them because you don't want to be contributing to the plastic pollution and inevitably killing off our fish and harming your own family. It's a massively hot day here today. You can certainly tell that summer is upon us and Christmas is right around the corner, which is why I've decided to make a Christmas decoration with you. It's a wall hanging made from fallen timber that I found on the property. Actually works really well if you have access to driftwood, but we don't. We have lots of uh, gray weathered timber on the property, so might as well use that. Recycle, we use. Okay, so what I needed to do first up was I took a walk around and I found some pieces of grey timber, all different shapes and sizes, and the knottier the better. I love a little bit of character in the timber. And I've lined them up now on the bench in order of largest at the bottom through to smallest at the top so that it makes a Christmas tree shape. Now we're gonna get out the uh, cordless drill and we're gonna drill some holes so that we can link them all together. Now you can see the Christmas tree timber lined up behind me and what I've got here to hang it all together is some rope, well thin thin rope, some cord actually, stuff that I use for um, putting in hoodies and what I need to do now is measure out a length that's going to join all the sections together, leave a loop at the top and then all the way back down again. Cut that off and then I need to choose a drill bit for my drill that's just a little bit thicker or Yes, a little bit thicker than the rope that I'm going to thread through. Now, because they're all odd shapes, we're going to take each section over to the vise, hold it in place so it's going to make it much easier for me to drill through. Now, because we're only using a cordless drill and a vise today, we won't need any protective gear exactly, but I'm going to use my trusty um, glasses because I can't see without them. Anyway, here we go with the first hole. 
I'm using the smallest piece of timber first, so the top of the tree. Just release the timber, turn it round and do the next side. Try not to squash the timber too much because it'll actually break. It's quite dry. <laughs> There we go. So that's going to be the top of our tree and I've drilled right through. So now I'm going to thread the cord through and tie a couple of knots at either end. So take your cord or your rope or your twine, whatever it is that you're using. You could even use ribbon or um, some tape. Lots of interesting things. Let your imagination run wild. Find the centre point and put a knot in there because that will help you to balance out the pieces of timber as you go. Just put a little knot. Yay. All right, then we take one end of the cord and we're going to thread it through one lot of the holes from the top down. If you have trouble with it um, fraying, you can tie a little, put a little bit of tape on the ends and that will probably help a lot. Okay, pull it through. Now you can see there's the top of the where we're going to hang it from. So we now want to want, make a knot underneath here so that it doesn't slip through. Okay, so can you see that? We've got the knot under there. Now we're going to do the same on the other side. So thread the piece of twine, piece of cord through the other series of holes. So it was proving a little bit difficult to thread through. So I've put some electrical tape on the end, which will make it much easier. Then I can push it through. Yeah, that's working a lot better. Okay, so play around with the positioning of the knots so that you've got them you know, in the place that you want them to be. And then let's get the next biggest piece of timber and we'll stick it in the vise and make some more holes. Okay, second one. So I'm wanting it to sit like this so that it's kind of like a little bit of a shelf and so I've done the holes downwards this time because it's going to act as a kind of cool little shelf arrangement for our uh, Christmas decorations to sit on. So there's the second shelf and we'll keep building and I'll show you when I've got them all strung Just on. Just a little bit of a tip, I found the easiest way to get the distance right between the different pieces of timber was to hang it physically and just to to do knot one and then measure it, level it, knot the other and then do the next one, then do the next one. So if you're hanging it then you get a better understanding of how it's going to look anyway when it goes up and onto the wall. So I'm going to take this up to the house now, put it on the wall and throw some decorations on it and see what you think. So there you have it, we're all done. Isn't it gorgeous? And it was just made out of fallen timber, some white painted pine cones that, that I had left over from a wreath I used last year, a couple of little Christmas garlands that I found lying around in a box somewhere, and some battery operated fairy lights. So it's all very natural and very beautiful. I hope you like it and I hope you have a go at making one for your family. It's beginning to look a little bit like Christmas at our place right now. I love to get down and dirty in my garden. I love the smell of soil, the feel of soil, and I love planting vegetables that are going to feed and nourish my family. 
Just re recently though, I found out that there's a reason why I feel good after I've spent a day in the garden. In the year 2000, an immunologist discovered that there's actually a bacteria in soil that acts as a natural antidepressant. It increases cognitive function as well, which says a lot for the schools that have kitchen garden programs. The bacteria is called Microbacterium vacci. Not a very pretty name, but it's hidden away in our soil. And when they did some lab tests on mice, it increased their brain function, it made them happier, and um, basically just improved their mood. So it really proves that when I get down and dirty in the garden on the weekend, it does lift my mood for a reason. It's also light exercise, which helps as well. Sometimes my back doesn't like me too much the next day, but it is good exercise. So I encourage you to get out and get down and dirty in your garden, inhale some dirt and soak up all that natural antidepressant. Bye for now. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. And join us on the website www.farewellmymanicure.com See you next time.